welcome back to Seasons, a devotional that's based on my book by the same name. And today, I'm going to start by saying, please try to ignore the noise in the background. My city has been swamped by the smoke from wildfires that are actually seven hours north of here. But if I didn't have my air filtration unit going right now, I wouldn't be able to see because my eyes are really sensitive to smoke and you would just see tears running down my cheeks. I can't hold back those allergy tears. I'm just not that strong. And that's the title of the chapter. I'm just not that strong. Many Christians feel that they have no need for face-to-face -face fellowship. They believe they can get all that they need by watching live stream events or by hanging out with Christians in chat rooms or just doing it all between them and God. They're probably stronger than I am. Perhaps they have developed a unique relationship with Jesus that's far superior to my own. I'm just not that strong. I need my brothers and sisters in Christ to support me, to pray for me, and to challenge me as we grow in faith together. It's all too easy to avoid confrontation and accountability over the internet because if somebody ticks you off, you can just leave the group, leave the chat area, unfollow them on Instagram, block them on Facebook. There's many ways that we can just say, hey, you're getting a little bit close to issues in my life I need to deal with when you're on the net. I need to be held accountable by those to whom I have given permission to confront me when my faith walk and my faith talk are not in sync. And that's hard to do when you're on the internet. My brothers and sisters in Christ rub me the wrong way at times, but if the truth be told, their rough edges rub against my rough edges in exactly the right way. My reactions to their imperfections expose my character flaws and my weaknesses that I can really try to hide when I'm on the internet. I need face-to-face -face fellowship to deal with those deep issues of the heart. I need my brothers and sisters in Christ they remind me that life is not always about me. And when there is more than just me around, I have to wait my turn sometimes. Sometimes I need to be the one who sits in the audience and applauds the accomplishments of others. God gave me arms to give and receive life-affirming hugs. He gave me hands to serve others. He gave me ears to hear others and to look them in the eye as I'm listening to their heart. Yes, he gave me eyes to see the faces of those who need me as much as I need them. I guess I will never be a super saint that doesn't need the rest of the body. Don't get me wrong, Jesus is my all-sufficiency and he is my Lord and Savior. However, I do believe that he would not have given his disciples the following commandment the night before he was going to be betrayed and the day before he was going to be crucified if he didn't think we needed one another as well john 13 verse 34 to 35 a new commandment i give to you that you love one another as i have loved you you are also to love one another by this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Did you notice how often Jesus repeats a certain phrase? In his day, they put emphasis, think of it, the bold print, on a phrase that they wanted to grab your attention by repeating it. And repeating it three times in this passage is significant as well because three is an important number to Hebrews. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. One. 
just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another too. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If you are a lone ranger in Christ, please consider this question in the way that I want to give it to you, which is to challenge you and to encourage you. How can you one another all by yourself. I read this really good analogy when it comes to not going back to church because you've been wounded in a church. And it basically went like this, saying that you will never go to another church as long as you live because of one bad church experience is akin to saying that you'll never go eat in a restaurant again because you had one bad experience. If you've been hurt and wounded in the body of Christ, and so many of us have, I'd like to pray with you that you'll come to a place where you're willing to allow the Lord to take all that pain and discouragement and frustration maybe a little bit of unforgiveness and bitterness and lay those things at the cross. I know that's a big thing to ask of many of you, but just consider it. Don't isolate yourself and put yourself into self-exile for the rest of your life from face-to-face -face fellowship because of wounds from your past. Allow the Lord to heal them, even if those who hurt you never apologize or never ask your forgiveness. Seek out healing from the Master's hand, then take the risk. Give it a really good try one more time.